Welcome to the How to Learn Anything course from Plato University, where you're going to learn the science-based tools of pro learners to accelerate your learning, remember more, and master any hard skills. These are the secret techniques they didn't tell you in school. If you're passionate about changing your life with learning, join us at Plato.University to get exclusive content with every lesson. I'm your learning guide, Brandon Stover, and let's get started. All right, we're part to our final technique, and this is going to be the master of them all. The thing that's going to show if you actually know something, deeply understand it, and can be able to apply it in a new situation. And this situation is going to be teaching it to somebody else. Specifically, today we're going to cover the Feynman technique. And at the core of this is your ability to teach other people the concepts that you're learning. You've probably heard the popular saying, once taught, twice learned. The idea is simple. When we teach other people, we reinforce our own learning. And this idea is not only supported by neuroscience, it's also the secret weapon behind some of history's most gifted thinkers. Perhaps best known was Nobel Prize winning theoretical physicist Dr. Richard Feynman. Feynman had a lifelong passion for teaching, which was evident to anybody who ever met him. Feynman taught at both Cornell and Caltech. He also advocated for alternative teaching methods at the California State Curriculum Commission and the National Science Teachers Association. Now using the Feynman technique, which we'll go into in just a moment, Feynman became one of the most prominent and respected scientists of all time. He was so much more than a Nobel Prize winning thought leader in one of the most complex subjects known to man, astrophysics. He was also the author of most of the popular series of physics lectures and books ever created the Feynman Lectures on Physics. And beyond that, Feynman was a tried and true polymath. Throughout his life, he used the Feynman technique to master not only physics, but everything from lock picking to languages, bongo drums, and even salsa dancing. And all of this because he focused on mastering what he learned in order to teach it to other people. Now, neuroscientists have sought to understand exactly why teaching others is so effective. And what they've discovered is when we teach others, we ourselves benefit tremendously. But why? Well, first of all, teaching others is an incredible motivator. The moment we commit to teaching something to someone else, we are more compelled to improve our own understanding of it. Oftentimes, we're inspired to help other people, and we'd probably like to avoid embarrassing ourselves by not knowing the material. This, in effect, harnesses all the benefits of self-testing, but makes the stakes real. But beyond that, teaching a subject to someone who knows less than we do presents unique challenges and opportunities for us as learners. Other people learn in different ways. They have different curiosities and levels of understanding. Teaching them requires us to take a more thorough and comprehensive approach to our own learning. We're forced to imagine new and alternative ways to understand a subject, and then take those understandings and create simpler, more creative ways to transmit that to other people. This process of dissecting a subject well enough to explain it results in a much deeper understanding among those who teach. And finally, when we teach other people, we're presented with very unique questions. And these questions may be sometimes far outside our own scope of focus, but they're going to be very crucial for our own understanding of a subject because it will force us to fill our knowledge gaps in ways that we would not have discovered on our own. And this takes us back to one of our oldest techniques that we've learned, which is we're actively recalling this information and being tested all the time by the people that we're teaching. And they're gonna test us in ways that we wouldn't even thought of before. It gives us insights into what we don't even know. So as you teach, you are essentially recruiting other people to look at the holes in your knowledge. And when they find these holes, they alert you to the areas you should go back and study further. Well, let's talk about specifically why you should use this in your own learning. Well, by having other people poke holes in your knowledge, you're never going to fool yourself. One of Feynman's most popular sayings was don't fool yourself and you're the easiest person to fool. He was often deeply skeptical about his own understanding. He was avoiding something called the Dunning-Kruger effect, which occurs when someone with inadequate understanding of a subject nonetheless believes he or she possesses more knowledge about the subject than the people who actually do. This can occur because when you lack knowledge about a subject, you also tend to lack the ability to assess your own abilities. And you know this, the more that you learn, the more questions arise and the more you realize that you don't know everything. And you can often avoid this problem of fooling yourself simply by asking a lot of questions about the things that you're learning. Similarly, 
asking better questions is a route to faster learning. The most mundane questions, the ones a sixth grader might ask or somebody else that you're teaching, can sometimes teach us the most because they require an explanation that digs into the details of a subject, into those areas that you don't fully understand yet. The other thing that it does is forces you to prove things yourself in order to understand them. For example, a couple scientific studies could come out and you read through them and you just take them at face value. Here, you're probably not gaining the full understanding that those scientists had put inside of those papers, and you're probably just taking their word for it. But something that you could do is prove what they did in that paper yourself by going through a similar experiment or doing it in a different way. By doing this, you're going to gain a deeper understanding because you went through the process yourself. And this means that you're not going to just take other people's proof at face value. You're going to have a deep intuition and understanding of subjects and be able to hold your own. Realizing when another person puts a point forward, it may not be correct because you have that deep understanding. Now at Plato University, whenever possible, we encourage you to teach concepts to others, especially those in the rest of our learning community. They'll be very receptive to it and they'll help you identify the parts of the skills that you're learning that you just haven't quite grasped yet. Now let's dive into the exact steps of the Feynman technique and how you can start applying it to anything that you're learning. The first step is easy. Choose a concept that you wish to learn about. The second step is to pretend that you are teaching it to a child, somebody at a sixth grade level. Get out a piece of paper and write down an explanation trying to explain the thing you're learning to that child. Now, if it's a concept that you're trying to teach to them, ask yourself, how would you convey the idea to somebody who has never heard of it before? If it's a problem that you're trying to teach them, explain how to solve it and crucially why that solution procedure makes sense to you. Then we move on to step three. Identify any gaps in your understanding that might show up when you try to simplify the concept. While you're doing this, go back to the source material to find the information that you need. Step four is to review what you've written down and that you would teach to another person and simplify the explanation again. Remember, we're trying to be able to teach it to a child. So the first time that you write an explanation out, it's probably not going to be in its most simplest form. So review what you've written and try and simplify it down to the essence of what this concept or problem is. Once you've gone through steps one through four a few different times, the final step is to test it out by actually teaching it to someone else. See how much of the concept or problem they're able to grasp. And then listen to the different questions they start asking you, because this is often the holes in your thinking and the parts of the skill or concept that you don't quite understand yet. And you can use these to guide you to go back to your learning material and find the answers to those. Once you do, try and write down another explanation and teach it to somebody else. So quickly, those five steps were choose a concept you wish to learn about. Number two, pretend you're teaching it to a child and write down a simple explanation. Number three, identify any gaps in your understanding that might show up when you try and simplify that concept. Number four, review and simplify your explanation again. And then number five, Test it out by teaching someone else. Now let's talk about a few applications that you can use this technique in. The first way to use this approach is when you don't understand something at all. In this case, the easiest way to do it is with the book in hand and go back and forth between your explanation and the one that's in the book. Now this obviously lacks the benefit of retrieval practice, but it can often be essential when the explanation you've been given baffles you. A second way to apply this is for solving a difficult problem or mastering a certain technique. In this instance, it's very important to go through the problem step by step alongside the explanation you generate, rather than simply summarizing it. Because when you summarize something, you may end up skipping over the core difficulties of the problem. Now obviously going deeper is going to take more time, but it can help you get a strong grasp over a new method in one go, rather than needing numerous repetitions to memorize the steps. A final way to apply this method is to ideas that are so important that it would be really helpful if you had a great intuition or understanding about them. In this application of the method, instead of focusing on explaining every detail or going along with a source material, you should try and focus on generating illustrative examples, analogies, or visualizations that would make the idea comprehensible to someone who has never touched this subject or hasn't learned as far as you have. Imagine that instead of trying to teach the idea, you're being paid to write a magazine article explaining the idea. What visual intuitions would you use to pin down the abstractions? What examples would really flush out the general principles you're explaining? How could you make something confusing feel very obvious? 
So to practice this technique, what I'd like you to do is teach the Feynman technique to someone else and then practice by going through the other techniques and teaching those techniques to somebody else. Teach somebody else how they should best be learning. That's one of the beautiful parts about the Feynman technique or teaching others is it's a gift that keeps on giving. You teach it to somebody and they can practice it by teaching it to someone else and so on and so forth. Thank you for taking the How to Learn Anything course. To get everything you need to become a pro learner, including advanced resources, personal coaching, and a community of passionate learners just like you, then visit plato.university slash courses slash learning and join us for free. Again, that's plato.university slash courses slash learning. This course was produced by Plato University, where students turn passions into purpose and learn skills to change the world. Learn more at plato.university.